this episode, I want to chat and answer a question by Sarah Kubik. Um, for those who uh, don't follow her, she's at Sarah Kubik. She also has another uh, Twitter handle, which is Help the Lawyers, where she helps lawyers get accustomed to Twitter. So for those out there starting in their uh, Twitter lifetime, uh, you should uh, check that out. Before I hop into her question, I also want to give a shout out. Today I'm wearing my Ryerson, Uni Ryerson University sweatshirt. And for those out there, <clears throat> Ryerson University has a great um, legal tech incubator that's based out and affiliated with them, and that's the Legal Innovation Zone. So shout out to the Legal Innovation Zone of David. You can put their Twitter handle uh, as well here. Um, and with our move to Toronto recently for our R&D Center, um, we're gonna be working with those folks and some of the exciting new tech startups coming out of there. Now, Sarah, back to Sarah. Sarah asks a question, I'm gonna read off my screen. It's describe what AI is not in the context of legal bots. Um, what is a bot versus a chat bot with no AI versus a chat bot built with AI? I'm gonna kind of go a little bit bigger picture on it and talk about kind of what AI is in compared to an expert system because I think that's kind of what you're asking. So generally with a chatbot, you enter into a conversation and depending on your answers, it uses that phraseology to then prompt something else. So it's kind of like a TurboTax situation where it'll ask you, hey, do you have any of this? You look at it, you say yes or no, did you buy property, for example, and it's the you know, tax season just passed us by, so I'm sure everyone is breathing a sigh of relief or not. Um, but generally it's that chain and you go through that chain and most chatbots do have that type of chain-like interaction. And so um, there's this age old debate, whether that's AI, whether that's not. And quite frankly, I don't care. I think at the end of the day, it's about focusing in on what helps people, um, but that's more of an expert like system interaction. Now, if you take something like Ross, where you're interacting with it and you're asking it a full blown legal question, you can ask it questions it's never seen before. It doesn't have any of those pre-programmed kind of decision trees. When you ask it a question, it's gonna go through a whole bunch of its training that happens in the past and it's gonna be able to access something similar in a kind of mimicking of the way that a human would think through something and read through documents so that it can bring back the best answers to you. So in one, you have it almost pre-programmed and positioned and you have these huge decision trees. They're very helpful. You can accomplish a lot of things such as your taxes, such as you know, some of those chatbots out there doing some pretty exciting things with providing information uh, across a variety of different legal issues and even outside the legal world. But then kind of more advanced AI and I think what we're seeing more and what you see in the media right now in terms of, you know, oh, artificial intelligence is now possible is what you see coming out of deep learning and neural nets and things like we're doing at Ross Intelligence where you can ask systems questions they've never seen before, they haven't been programmed, they haven't been trained on them, but based off of their past experiences, they're able to answer that question. So Sarah, I hope that answers your question. I also noticed recently you tweeted and said, hey, you know, how much does AI cost for law firms? So this is almost like a, a second answer as a freebie. Um, uh, it depends the tool that you're bringing into a law firm, but in terms of Ross Intelligence and our prices, we're very proud of the fact that we've priced it so that if you're a solo practitioner, small law firm, medium sized large, international, um, Anything in between, in-house team, et cetera, it's affordable. And um, if for anyone out there watching that practices in intellectual property or bankruptcy, Ross is up and running in those areas. So you can pop over to our website, um, David, you can put it there, and talk to someone from our sales and pricing team on that. Um, but yeah, so Sarah, um, what's the difference between them? One is really, I'd say, more static. You have to go through, you have to say certain words to be able to get, get certain re interactions out of it. And the other one's very dynamic. It's kind of free flowing and I think what the advances in AI that you're reading about is more generally on that other side. But that isn't to mean one is more helpful than the other because for some things you don't need as much of a dynamic situation, uh, but for really tough challenges you do. And that's where Ross Intelligence is focusing our efforts. So thanks again. Another shout out to uh, the Legal Innovation Zone, doing exciting things and really excited about next episode where we're gonna be tackling a really great question. Um, so see everyone soon and if you have a question, zip it to me um, on Twitter. You can also email us here um, and with your question and David will be sure to answer and, and incorporate it into a future episode. Thank you.